Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve another leak code contest problem, maximum number of removable characters. And if you find this video helpful, don't forget to like, it supports the channel a lot. And this is related to subsequences. So we're given two strings S and P and we're guaranteed that P is a subsequence of the string S. And if you don't know what a subsequence is, it's basically if we take the string S and remove some characters from it or remove none of the characters, the string S can be transformed into P. So P is a subsequence of S. And the relative order has to stay the same. So basically, you know, if we had a string ABC and we had AC, AC is a subsequence of ABC because if we remove the B, the relative order of these two characters matches this string. This is the subsequence, this is the original string. And we're given an array of removable characters. So each uh, value in this array, three basically tells us that index three of the string S is removable. So if we remove index three of the original string S, then the question is, can P still be a subsequence of the string S? So, you know, we're trying to find the maximum number of removable characters from starting at position zero that we can do and remove from the string S such that P is still going to be a subsequence of S. So, you know, we, we start at the beginning, so maybe we remove three and it's still a subsequence. We remove the first two, we remove three and position one, it's still a subsequence, but then maybe we get to zero. If we remove zero, then it's no longer, P is no longer a subsequence of S. That would tell us that we can only remove the first two characters from the removable, right? The first two indices from the removable array, such that P is still a subsequence of S. So the main thing to know is how can we determine if two strings are subsequences? That's the pretty straightforward part of this algorithm. And once you know that, you can easily do the brute force. So let's say we have one string S and we have another string P, A, B. Basically, we're gonna start at the beginning of S and we want to find every single character in P. So we're looking for, for now we're looking for an A, right? We look at the first character, it is an A, great, right? Next, we're looking for a B, and of course, we find the second character is a B, and then we're done, right? We found every single character in P, therefore, P is a subsequence of S. Now, let's say we actually didn't have these first three or these first two characters. Is this still a subsequence? Can this a string still be a subsequence of this? Yes, it can. Let's figure it out. So we start at A again. We have a C right now. So we have a C. We did not find A, so we have to skip this C. Next, we look at the second character. Is this an A that we're looking for? Yes, this is the A we're looking for. So we're done with that, and we're done with this A. Now we're looking for a B. We find a C. That's not what we're looking for. Find, look at the next character. Yes, this is the B that we're looking for. Therefore, we found the other B too. Now, what if there was no B in this string? If there wasn't a B, we look at C. Okay, C does is not the character we're looking for. Then we got to the end of S. And so we, we never found this B that we were looking for. So in that case, we would return false. P is not a subsequence of S. So that once you know that algorithm, it's a linear time algorithm, basically at worst case, the length of the longer string, AKA S. Then basically the brute force solution of this problem is not too difficult. We're gonna go through every position and removable. Look at the first one, right? Let's say we remove three from this string S, we remove this character, and then we check, is P a subsequence of that? We do that in O of N time. And we're basically gonna keep doing that, right? Next, we're gonna say, okay, remove position one. So we remove position three and we remove position one and we do the same linear time algorithm. Check, is this a subsequence? So worst case, how many times are we gonna do it? It's gonna be O of N, which is how long it takes to find if it's a subsequence, multiplied by K because K is the number of removable indices. That's the brute force. And in my opinion, it should be good enough to pass this problem, but for some reason it's not. And the, the slight optimization you can do is to, instead of being n times k, we can make this n times log k, basically by doing binary search on the removable array. So we're finding the, the max number of k values, the max number of indices from this removable array that we can remove from the string S such that P is still going to be a subsequence. So basically just doing binary search instead of doing an iterative brute force, we're doing binary search on the removable array. Once you know that, the code isn't too difficult. So let me dive into it now. It's gonna be n log k solution. 
So remember the first thing we want to do is be able to check if a string is a subsequence of another. So let's define that helper function here. So let's say we're given a string s and we're given a potential subsequence. We want to know is this subsequence an actual subsequence of s. So we're going to need two pointers like I showed, i1, i2, for each of the strings respectively. They're both going to start at the beginning, right? And we want to continue to go while i1 is inbound so i1 is going to be the pointer for s and i2 is also inbounds which is going to be the pointer for uh the subsequence now remember we're going to be comparing the characters right so we're going to look at if s of i1 is not equal to s of i2 that means we did not find the character we were looking for remember we're looking for this character or not s but a subsequence let me fix that so we're looking in the subsequence string we're looking for this character if we don't find it in s then we have to move to the next position so we're gonna say i1 plus one and then we're gonna continue to the next iteration of the loop now there's one other thing i'm gonna have to do here as well let me show you so if i1 the pointer is in the removed pointers that's another condition where we're going to have to skip that character. Remember, potentially we are removing some uh, pointers or, or some positions from S. So I, I haven't shown that yet, but we're going to get to it later. We're going to maintain a removed set, which is going to tell us what are all the characters that have been removed so far. If we're at a removed character in the string S, then we're going to skip that character. But let's say the characters do match and the character hasn't been removed. In that case, that's good. Then we're going to increment both pointers. So I1 increment by one and I2 increment by one. That means we found that character we were looking for. Now we can look for the next character. And once this loop is done executing, that means one of these pointers has gone out of bounds. How do we know if we actually found a subsequence or not? Well, if the I2 pointer went out of bounds, that means we were able to find every character we were looking for. So basically, we can return true if I2 is equal to the length of subsequence. That means it went out of bounds. Then we're going to return true. If it didn't go out of bounds, that means we were not able to find every character we were looking for. Then we return false. Okay, so that's great. Now let's actually get to the binary search portion. So initially we're gonna define our result to be zero. That means zero of the removable characters we actually removed. And we're gonna be returning what's the max number of removable characters can we actually remove. And we're gonna have two pointers because this is binary search. So zero left is gonna be at zero. And the right pointer is going to be at the length of removable minus one. Because remember, we're doing the binary search on the removable array. We want to know what's the max number of removable characters we can actually remove. So let's continue this binary search while our pointers are valid. So while left is less than or equal to right, we're going to compute the middle in Python. To do integer division, we're going to have to do double slash. So left plus right, double slash divide by two. And the removed set that I wrote up here, we're actually not going to be defining it up there. We're going to be using it down here. So this middle value tells us we're going to take the first M values from the removable array and actually remove them from S. And we're going to track which ones have been removed in a set. So we're going to have removed set and the first M values from the removable. So we're going to take removable sub index it so from the beginning all the way to m plus one because we know python uh the second index is non-inclusive so these are the characters we removed from s these are the positions of the characters we removed from s so now all we're going to do is call our binary or call our helper function is subsequence so we'll pass in s and we'll pass in the subsequence now you might not like the style i'm doing this with the way i'm doing it is since this uh variable is defined here and you know this is a function defined inside of a function it will have access to the removed set that we just defined but if you really wanted to you could explicitly take this set and pass it into this function i just didn't do that but if you prefer to you can you can see the removed set is being referenced right on this line so we're going to call this is subsequence. If it returns true, that means we found a potential number of removable characters. So we're going to take our result and set it to the max of itself and M. But not just M, M plus one, because we, we know that what we're trying to return is the number of removable characters we can actually remove, not the index. M tells us the index. So we know arrays are index zero, so we take M plus one. 
And then the else case is also something we have to worry about because this is binary search. We're going to be updating our left and right pointers differently depending on what the result was. If we did find a subsequence, then we're going to be greedy. We're going to say, hey, maybe there's even more that we can remove from removable. Then we're going to set our left pointer equal to M plus one. Basically, we're going to be searching to the right, maybe looking for even more that we can remove from the removable array else case is going to be the opposite. We're going to say, okay, we couldn't remove the first M, so let's try even less. Maybe we can remove less, so we're going to set our right pointer to M minus one. We're going to be looking to the left in our binary search. And eventually our binary search will stop. We will have updated the result if we ever found a certain number that we could have removed. And then finally at the end, all we have to do is return that result, which will tell us how many from the beginning of removable that we were actually able to remove. Okay, oops, I'm pretty dumb. So when we're passing into this is subsequence, we're passing an S as the original array and P as the subsequence, not actually that. So hopefully you were able to catch that on your own, my stupid little mistakes. But other than that, you can see that the solution does work and it's somewhat efficient. I don't know if somebody was able to find a better solution than this, but hopefully this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.